the structure of our DNA and why, why what what that spiral is representing. Yeah, yeah it's, it's an interesting one, especially considering the idea of you know, what, what we have now is an idea of DNA where 10% of it incredibly, you know, intricate, not a huge amount of information with, you know, DNA being able to, of, of uh, if the DNA is put end to end, like from one human body, I think it can go to the moon and back five times or some, there's some crazy statistic about how much DNA there is in one human body. And yet, our current thinking is 10% of that is, is what gives, that contains all the, all the essential information for the physical body, for this expression of the physical body. And the, the other 90% is called junk DNA because we don't know what to, <laughs> certainly it doesn't serve some useful function that we're not quite thinking about in the context of, of biology. So you see the biological and we say, well, we're looking at biology in a biological context and we're seeing that 10% has no function that we see in biology. So therefore it's junk? Or does that mean that therefore it has some function that's 10 times, 9 times the, <laughs> the intricacy and, and value of the bio, biological body. You know, what if that 90% has to do with consciousness? What is the relationship between DNA and consciousness? Is there a relationship? Does it serve, one theory is that, that DNA is double-stranded and there's a third space in which you have a, a helical strand of, of water is a conductive medium because of the, the, the electrolytes within it. And so you have a, a wire, electrical wire. And there's, there's evidence that the, the conductivity of that wire increases, I believe it's 10,000 times by the presence of a, uh, a state of matter called a condensate. Oh, but now we're talking, we've just jumped paradigms in our, our current world model as it's applied, as it's taught. We, the, we say physics, chemistry, oh, they're two different courses, different teachers, different views of the world. In biology, we're looking at life. But we tend to look at it in a, in a context removed from the, the deeper, the physics of the matter, physics of the sub, sub, subject. Uh, I'll give an example. In, in cardiology, when it's taught about about circulation, about regulation of blood pressure and blood flow, and the, the, the health, and the, the disease states of the cardiovascular system, they be, in looking at blood flow, they begin the look by oversimplifying the physics of the situation and presenting a model, which is the basic model that's used, that's apl applied in the, the clinic in modern Western medicine, a model in which 50% of the blood flow isn't, isn't even modeled. 50% must be junk. But it's that junk that makes the difference between an organ that's alive and an organ that's functioning at its, at its potential. Half of the half of the circulation is not accounted for in a in a, a system in a model in which you have hard rigid pipes. Blood vessels aren't. They can be. 
they have different states. They can be rigid and, and reflect pressure waves back to the system, and that's how an acupuncturist is trained to, to, to read in the pulse, those reflections of waves from the organs that, that tell them where, where the, the energy is not flowing. Uh, in in you know in a disease state, we have less than fifty percent perhaps, but but at a state of of lack of disease, but not a state of optimum health, or wellness, or function, functionality. Uh, we're at the borderline of disease. We're, we're susceptible to disease. In a state of radiant health, the state of susceptibility is less. Uh, a person who, for example, injures themselves frequently will, will be found to be in a state where their wood element, the liver, the, the visual system, the spatial awareness based on, on photons is diminished, it's reduced. We can measure the visual field awareness and that peripheral awareness is reduced and so the the movement system, the motor system doesn't have a database of space, a spatial database that's full and accurate to operate on to move in space without creating damage. But when the, the full design function of of the human vessel is activated, there's grace. There's, there's not that tendency toward injury and damage and disease. So I've been asking myself, looking at the question of how to define that state of of fullness of, of function of consciousness on a, on a scientific level what is it what does it mean how can we define that and the the best definition I've, I've come across is that it must be what we understand as a state of coherence. Uh, for example, quality, if we look at quality of life or, or quantity of life, let's start with quantity. We can objectify how long does a person live. That's a measure of coherence of the biological. So, for example, a, a, a culture that has higher longevity, Japan, there's a, a higher level of coherence between that culture, that uh, unique set of stimuli that contains nourishment and, and stress. So, that the, when, when we look at longevity, the longer a, a, a group of people live, or an individual, the longer the life is extended, it tends to not only extend the the number of years of, of quality quality life, but also to reduce the years of disability, of dysfunction, of, of decay, of degener degenerative loss of function. Looking at looking for evidence of of. physiological coherence, there's some interesting clues. There's the work of Fritz Popp in Europe, looking at 
actual photons released from cells that are coherent biophotons that are mo the, the most actively released uh, during changes in cell function, uh, whether it's whether it's developmental changes, whether it's degenerative changes, or at, also at, at the death of a cell, cell death, there's this communication, biocommunication. 